Come on, boy. Yay! Hey, good morning, Jen from Jekyll Bates, and it's time for another spray session. What? What? Seriously, right now? Right now. Really? Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Ready, go. Okay. 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 Okay, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Good boy. Good girl. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Good boy. Whoa. Good girl. One more. Ready? Drop it. Good girl. Oh, God, the slobber kiddo. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Good boy. Good girl. <laughs> That's it. Let's put it up for now. Good boy. Treats, huh? Yeah. Casey. Good girl. Molly. Good boy. Okay, where were we? Good morning, everybody. Jen from Jekyll Bates, and it's time for another spray session lesson. So we're going to cover two things today. Frequently asked question, how to make a simple thread fin shad pattern. And we're going to keep it as simplistic as possible. We're also going to um, use some common things that you might have laying around. Uh, and this is, it's going to be a cool pattern, but it's also going to be simplified in case you don't have a lot of stenciling and things like that. So the second thing is how do I cover big mistakes? Now, I'm, I'm about to give myself away here because I didn't always paint really, really well. So this is when I first started painting. And, um, yeah. So that's enough said about that. So these are some really old when I was first learning how to, to spray. And, and I think that I probably even used um, fingernail polish on this particular bait, which is hilarious. But you know what? It works. And this and this have both caught fish. But I have uh, a couple other samples that I can draw, draw from when I want to go back to the good old days of how I used to spray. Um, and I don't obviously don't spray like that anymore. Um, but what, what if you have a bait that just looks like doo-doo and you want to spray something better over it? Well, you can. And it's real easy. And we're just going to cover it and spray it again. So the first one, we're gonna, the first part is going to be covering and respraying. The second one that we're going to do in this lesson is a thread, thread fin shad. And that's been like my number one question. It seems to be a very common theme and they don't want to look like, you know, the regular big box store baits. You want your own pattern, so let's give you one. We're going to start with this. It's a deep diver. Uh, this is an old RC bait. RC Cola did a series and I've got a few that are in mint condition. This one is a reclaimed bait from the bottom of Lake Pickwick and uh, I've got a black primer color on it. You don't always have to use white as your primer color. And the reason I did black on this one is because we're going to cover this with uh, net. Okay, this is just a, a regular old netting. I got it from Walmart. Comes by the yard. It's extremely inexpensive. I think it's like a dollar twelve a yard. So a yard goes a long way. Okay, that's three feet by three feet. And um, 
So let's get uh, let's get on that. So we're going to use this. We're going to use uh, basic things like Q-tips for the shad dot on the sides, and I'm going to show you how to do that effectively so it doesn't look like that one. Um, but let's cover some baits. You guys have masking tape laying around your house. Now would be the time. Just general purpose masking tape. You don't need to get painter's tape. This stuff is way cheaper. Pick it up at pretty much anywhere. Dollar General has it. Walmart has it. Your grocery store is going to have it. And um, it's probably about half or a third of the price that this, uh, the blue painter's tape is. Does the same thing. So just for this, we're going to cover it. I am going to eventually clear these in on wiggle warts. Um, a lot of the times you'll see where the bill has been painted to, and that's just the style for the wiggle wart. It's traditional. It's kind of old school, if you will. There we go. Right on cue. We can't get through a single video this week without rascal barking. Um, it's just somebody going to church, folks. It's Sunday morning. And um, that's okay. They're allowed to go to church. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. I am celebrating in my own fashion this morning, and I'm having some fun with you guys. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's going to be hot as blazes down here in Arkansas. I think uh, we're supposed to be in triple digits again. Woohoo! Happy summer from Jekyll Bates. So for this, uh, these these style baits right here. Whew, lordy. Um, we're going to do a couple of things with it. Number one, we're going to pull these eyes out because we're not going to cover. We're going to put new eyes on it. And uh, I, one thing I learned to do pretty early on is put the eyes in well so that they were super glued. I could dig them out usually with a certain amount of ease, but if you're replacing eyes, just to show you, you can just scoop them out usually with a tip of scissors or um, a fairly sturdy knife be careful if you're using knives so there the eyes are out and you'll see on these particular style baits um, there's a little you can't get the uh, the tape all the way to the top without hitting this nose piece the eyelet so I put a little notch in mine I would imagine that you guys do too. Yes, if you guys can hear it, I am listening to jazz this morning. I listen to, <laughs> um, I'm kind of all over the board because if you guys know the backstory, I was a touring musician for a number of years. Um, so I have, uh, I love jazz, I love blues. Um, Memphis really does it for me. Love BB King, love metal. Um, everything from ska to punk to you name it, speed metal, hard rock, I like rap, hip hop country. It, I lived in Nashville for a while. And when I lived in Nashville, I, as much as I love country music, and I love, love, love country music, I um, always felt like I should have lived in Memphis because uh, there's just something about blues and jazz. You know, it's just it's kind of more a funky beat. I dig it. But um, this morning's jazz. Now, generally when I'm painting watercolors, it's, it's either like... Um, like college music or, or jazz, blues. Um, it's hard to get a good painting going when you're listening to Metallica, Megadeth. All right, so we've got the bill on this one. Got the bill done on this one. I do have a third over here. Um, this one's got, looks like some kind of drip on it which it's really not going to affect the swimmability. Is that a word or did I just make that up from my fictionary? Swimmability. It's not going to affect the way the bait swims. Um, just that one little bit. But you know, wiggle warts are kind of finicky creatures anyways. They uh, often need to be tuned before they're fished with any success. So one of the things that we go to great pains to do here at Jekyll Baits before the bait ever goes out the door is to make sure that it's tuned properly. Now what do we mean by that? You hear that all the time, but a lot of you guys may not know. Um, some of you that are just starting out or you're novices to fishing, bass fishing, any kind of fishing. And uh, let's, let's say you get a lure and it just it shoots off to the right or to the left any time that you, you swim it. Well chances are good that this little nose eyelet has been bent or 
these two underneath are bent. So you really want to check out your eyelets and make sure that they're in straight lines. Um, they're not all jacked off to the side here. And then on the front, on the front side, let me see if I can find a, well hey, here's another one. So when you're looking at this, you want to make sure a couple of things. You want to make sure because the mold, as you can see, all molds are put together side to side. Okay? So you want to run your hand down the seam and make sure that it's put together it's been sanded down. There's no rough edges. And a lot of times on the bill, you'll start to see a little bit of splitting, especially if you're getting a cheaper blank. Not necessarily cheap. I hate using that word, but a bait that's less expensive that may or may not have been vetted. And, uh, you know, a good question and kind of a series of back and forth happened the other day. So I'm going to just go off on a little rabbit hole here just for a second. So there's this question that everybody has about where these baits originate from, most of the blanks that you're going to get, that you're going to purchase, well, they've come from overseas. There are very few places unless you're buying the actual box baits, like these Berkeleys and uh, the Booyahs, and even, even most of them, the blanks have come from China or somewhere near China. So then a lot of times you'll see American companies get a bunch of baits and then sell them. So are they getting the same bait? Uh, sometimes yes. Sometimes they get the exact same bait from the exact same producer, manufacturer, and they double the price, triple the price. But then you have companies like Dinger Baits, and I know I keep going back to these guys, but the reason that these guys are so successful over at Dinger is that they actually have come up with their own pressings. Um, they work very closely with some of these distributors. Not saying they don't work with distributors in China, they do. Um, but they're coming up with their own molds, they're coming up with something that's a little bit better, and they're taking the time to vet the product. So basically there's a vetting process where they're going to go and they, at least they claim that they're going to go through and test the baits first and make sure that there's no imperfections with the baits before they sell them to you. Um, virtually, yes, it's the same bait. Can you do that if you buy 100 bulk baits? Sure. You can do that. Do most people that are doing this as a hobby have the time to sit through 100 baits and do it and check it and float test it and sand them down and all that? No. No, most people don't have that kind of time. So it's a convenience. Um, but then there's the whole, you know, you're screwing over America every time you buy from China. Well, um, that would make every single company on the face of the planet that's ever made a bait pretty much. Um, there are very few companies that you can get from Bass Pro or any kind of lure from anywhere that has not had the blank produced in China. So you need to be very careful with what you're saying. I, I believe in it. I, you know, shop local, think global. But at the same time, the pot can't call the kettle black. So know the facts before you make the statements. That's my little soapbox. We're going to get off of that now. That might not make it into the video. But it probably will, because I think it's important that everybody knows that there's just about one or two places on the planet that produce blanks, and they're all in China. So it doesn't matter where the baits are coming from. There's very few places that make their own baits and press their own molds and produce the plastics here in the States. We're all importing it, which is why everybody's in a, in a war about the tariffs. So I know you guys are going to have heated opinions about that. I would love to know, in a very nice debate, a factual driven debate would be good. Leave your comments for me. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about what I'm saying? There is fact to it. I promise you that. Um, but before we call the kettle black, we just have to understand that every bait on the face of the planet was probably pressed in China, unless it specifically says made in the United States. Let's pull one off. Let's take a look. Here's Berkeley. It's pure fishing. Do do do. Oh, look. Made in China. Okay, how about Duo? Let's see, do they even tell you? Hmm. These guys don't even tell you where their baits are made from. I know the blanks that we deal with come from China. And this is a Japanese bait, so let's just guess overseas somewhere. Uh, how about Booyah? Booyah is a red-blooded American company. Ah, made in China. Okay. 
Mans. How about Mans? Mans, maybe? There you go, kids. Buy USA. Made in the USA. You want to stay local? Buy a Mans. Strike King, the number one company, arguably, in the fishing industry. Made in Costa Rica. Not China. Costa Rica. Now, I don't know if the blank was fabricated in China and then it was spray painted in Costa Rica. And we're completely off of where we were. We were definitely in the weeds with the whole bait debate. It's kind of funny. It's a bait debate. But I want to know what you think about that. I think it's very difficult not to have a working relationship with other countries. I, I will definitely agree with that. But we can't just go bash in every place that you get blanks from because they're not states. Um, I think that does more harm than good. Just, just my thoughts, just my opinions. So let's get back into this. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to handle the jazz. It's uh, a little bit too much this morning. We're just going to continue to tape around here. Here. Our crappy old baits. It's interesting that I'm going to get a facelift this morning. Up. And we're, we're also going to answer the most practice. frequently asked question I get in my messenger system. How do I make a good looking, inexpensive, without using like $500 worth of stenciling and so forth, um, thread fin shad? So we're going to do the, we're going to do both of those things this morning. Um, I've prepped my baits. I've got masking tape on the bills. The, the, the tape is going to come off later and you're going to see what we do with it. But just for now, we're going to pop these on the alligator clips here, the helping hands. All of that stuff is linked in the description below if you want to get the best prices. I've left you some links. Um, and just uh, not that it matters, but if you guys are Prime, if you guys um, are Prime members for Amazon or you guys are interested in Amazon because they really, they're pretty inexpensive. That's a pretty decent, secure place online to get stuff from and I get a lot of stuff from there. They're doing a, what's called a Prime Days. So that's going to give Prime membership owners or you know people that subscribe to their Prime membership a chance to get some really stupid discounts. So check out Amazon.com and uh, and look at Prime, and I can leave you a link for how to become a Prime member down there too. It's not that expensive, I don't think. Um, got our baits prepped. I'm going to bring one more helping hands over because I've got some other stuff that I got to take care of today. And just recently, I go through cleaning processes and really needed to get my bench. I hadn't cleaned my bench in a while and it was getting pretty gross. So moved off all my alligator clips. Rascal, please don't start barking. I'll be very upset. So first things first. You do not need to throw away. Let me start that over without any interruptions from the compressor. You do not need to throw away baits that you've screwed up. You don't. You can prime them again and paint them again. No problem. And most of the time, you don't even have to scuff anything. You don't have to strip anything. It's not that difficult. So we're just going to prime these three and repaint them. I um, Here's a little helpful tip. I keep a little bit of cleaning solution in my chamber overnight. I don't, uh, I don't put my airbrush away at night because I'm out here six, seven days a week. Um, I, <laughs> I quit my day job, um, got out of the DC rat race, and uh, headed for higher ground and clearer water and ended up in Arkansas. And um, it, it's been a wild journey and I, I love what I do. I get to be my own boss and uh, I've managed to become successful and I think that you guys can too but the, the basics to any kind of success is you got to put the effort in. You've got to expect that the first year and a half you're really not going to get ahead. You're not going to turn a million dollars profit. Shoot, I'm, after five years I'm not turning a million dollar profit but I am turning a profit so you guys can do it too. I believe in you guys. That's why I want to help you guys. Um, 
I get no greater joy than to help somebody do something cool that they like to do, which is why I've decided to uh, to start teaching on YouTube. So hopefully it helps you guys out. But yeah, I just I leave a little cleaning solution in my chamber overnight, and in the morning we just blow that off. Make sure all the junk is out of the chamber. And here's another quick tip. We're doing lots of quick tips this morning. Um, water, if you have a, a place to get moisture built up, and it will, which is why the, most of these little uh, compressors come with moisture relief chamber. Don't know if that's the official word for it, but those of you that are masterful at this, um, tell me what that's called. But it, it's basically, it's a vapor chamber. It's where all the water collects and all the um, condensation collects because it does. Um, goes down into this, this little chamber here and it sits and it'll fill up if you don't if you don't address it. But what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do it. And it's just relieving the pressure valve is all that is. I'm going to use a crappy old towel that just sits there. There's a I don't know if this is going to be a good, well I can demonstrate it and let it shoot down. You guys can see the water relief. You can see that water coming out. And that's how you do it. That water just collects in the bottom. And every so often you want to cut, usually about every two weeks. I'll clean that up. We'll get the water off of there and let this towel dry back off. It doesn't smell bad. It's just condensation buildup. Gonna shake up our white. Now, here's another thing. You can avoid getting clumps this way too. Um, a lot of times, if you've been using paint the day before, and you go back to use the same paint, you'll notice that there's a little bit of buildup. And let's see if we can find something that's a little bit... There we go. Just pull some of this junk off of here. And that's mostly when you're pushing paint out of the top of your bottle here. See all that junk and build up before you dump this into your chamber because that's where you're getting your clogs. I can almost 100% guarantee that's where they're coming from. Just check the top and if it looks a little bit sticky and some clumps there, get it off before you push that paint through the tube. Alright. Look at how easy that is. And if you have a, a lot of definition in the old bait that's messed up, a lot of different color changes, just put on a little bit heavier of a coat. And there you have it. Super easy lemon squeezy. There it is. Do the same thing with these, and I've got plenty of paint in the chamber. Ooh, goodbye, hideous looking bait. Goodbye. All right. Now we're ready to make it look beautiful. And you can see, I can still see that little old shad dot in there, so we're going to probably put a second coat on that. I'm just going to get enough to do this other bait here. Now on these wiggle warts, we are going to come back and Pull the tape off of the bill. But yeah, you can see, um, if you guys see my workshop videos and you see my sessions videos, you know the level of painting that I'm doing now. And it's, and it's not Gerald Novick by any means. It's not his level, but he's kind of like the Yoda of us all. Um, so that's, again, that's like the aspiration for a lot of painters is to paint like that guy. He's phenomenal. Him, Michael, Garcia, all those guys are just mega blessed with their abilities and their talents. Um, but we'll all get there, right? And, and if I can help you guys 
do something that you don't know how to do yet then I'm doing my job and I'm loving what I'm doing so on this one that's pretty much covered we're just gonna let this air dry I'm not gonna heat set this I've also noticed that letting a primer dry naturally prevents that cracking a lot that's another question that I get is that hey there's I uh, heat set this white primer and it cracked and it's crazy and I don't know what to do with it just leave it air dry while you're doing other stuff and uh, we're gonna set these off to the side I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna turn the camera back on so just um, just real quick I don't know if the camera can pick this up but I've got a, a chunk of paint down here and it's it came from the place where I said it was going to come from, came from the edges of that, uh, that opaque white tube. But I also talked, the last video that I uploaded, I talked a lot about these old U.S. art supply um, paint bottles, these little tiny paint bottles. And that one of the things that I really liked about it was that it had this little thin tip nozzle. Well, if you put cleaner in that, folks, and then you squirt that in now look at how it pulled this pulled that right up and there is that clump because it pressurizes what shoots through it anytime that you have is sort of why fish hang out in narrow channels that has better water flow anytime you put something into a smaller you know, tube and then you shoot that out it's going to pressurize that water and water is going to come out at a higher rate and there you go. So that's a neat tip for helping you clean your chambers out a little bit easier. Hopefully that works for you guys. It works for me. But little helpful tips. I'm all about little helpful tips this morning. Okay. Set that off to the side for a minute. And let's make a thread fin. You're going to need alligator clips. You're going to need a Q-tip. Going to need some basic colors for this one. So the basic colors I'm going to be using two shades of blue, just a tiny bit of pink, going to need a little bit of brown, definitely some pearlized white, some opaque white, and then we'll get into the shading. Probably going to use just a little bit of detail black in this as well. So that's going to be our basic color scheme for this. Thread fins, um, they come in various shades, but their basic color scheme that you're going to see is going to be like a blacker, darker indigo back. Um, some white and pearl on the belly a little bit. Some blush cheek colors, the pink around their gill plates and then some almost like almost looks bruising so you get that blue gray and then silver so we're not going to do silver today I've got silver but let's just let's keep it as simple as we can with the color scheme so I did a primer on this and it's black I'm going to take netting and again it's like a buck 18 a yard little three feet by three feet swath I always hook that back first keep my thumb down when you're covering stuff like this I keep my thumb on the nose piece and then I'm gonna pinch this back off so the back is not gonna go anywhere I'm gonna pinch that off with alligator clips I'm gonna continue to stretch this out just a little bit you don't want to pull too hard because this stuff will tear eventually and with that I'm gonna wrap this bill and now I'm going to pinch that back part off. So I've got this held down pretty tight. Take two more alligator clips. And add them to the edge of the bill. I mean, you can get crazy and do a third if you want. We can do that third and keep that secure on the edge. It's a, this is a deep bill said this is an old uh, novelty RC Cola deep diver guys the, the those are the veterans that have been there maybe if Paul Stiles is watching today he's uh, one of the WEC zoom guys that worked with them for many many years and I know he watches videos because I get comments and phone calls and stuff but Paul who did the RC Colas was that a Booyah or an Excalibur um, 
let me know in the comments below. I don't remember who did the old novelty RC Colas, but there was a bunch, like Bush Beer came out with them, and there's just a whole bunch of older baits that were super cool, and they, they fished really, really well. Um, but I, I don't recall whose, uh, whose baits they were. So we don't need all of this. So the stuff, now that we've done the wrap around and we've pinched it off, we're gonna get rid of this excess. And you can use um, loofah sponges. You can, the, the little scrubby sponges that you get in the bath and beauty, health and beauty departments, Walmart, the thrift stores. You can use that. That's just, I usually end up getting yards and yards at a time. It's a little bit cheaper than getting a scrubby sponge. And you don't have to go, I mean, this just comes as it is. You don't have to go through pulling those things apart. But you can use it if you just, if that's all you got laying around your house. Just um, tell mom or dad or the spouse that you're gonna destroy one of the scrubby scrunches. And just pinch this off. And you wanna continue to pull this out, pull it tight with your hands because you want a really good tight fit on the on the back part of this and as you pull that then take your other hand just to hold that in place and that's always going to give you that real nice tight seal between the the bait that way when you spray it it's not going to shoot underneath of it and look all nasty And I take a little bit of extra time to show this to you guys because sometimes when you're moving quickly through a video, it's easy to make the assumption that people automatically know what they're doing. Some of us do, some of us don't. I didn't know. So I would stop a video and look at it and look at it and rewind the video and, and I've done that and it works. But I just want to put that extra step in and really show you guys exactly what I'm doing. And I hope that helps. If that helps, leave me a comment below that it helps. Um, if not, then I'll stop doing it and take a little bit of time off the length of my videos. All right, so we have, and see, it did tear just a little bit right here, but that's all right. That's on the, that's on the underside, so. All right, I think we're ready to spray it. Take a break for a second because it was like listening to nails on the chalkboard. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything that I wanted to listen to. So I'm going back to my old stomping grounds, y'all. We're back in Baltimore, Maryland. We listen to some I Y Y ninety eight rock. Let's see if I can. Summer is coming. Yeah, it's a commercial. Woo. <sighs> Such is life, huh? Lazy. Watch out, boy. I gotta get here. Good boy. This is rascal, y'all. Oh, Greta Van Fleet. Okay. Primer. We're gonna use the opaque primer. And the cool thing about this is we're going to go right over to our heat set. We're going to heat set this real quick before we put anything else on it. But we want to get a really good primer coat on it. And I'm about four or five inches off the bait itself because I don't want to push down. I want to be right on top of the bait. Let's go heat set this. Alrighty, we have got the primer on and we're getting ready to uh, hit it with a little bit of pearlized. We're going to go right from I didn't... Uh, I didn't want to put cleaner in the chamber because I knew. And look, there it is again, folks. Pull that off. Get those chunks out of there. Always check the top of these before you put any paint in your chamber. That's going to clear up a lot of your clogging problems. So we're going to go back over this. Rascal, honey, I really don't want you hanging out here because you're going to be breathing it. Rascal, come on, buddy. Come on, get over here with three. Get over here with Casey. Casey knows where to sit. Okay. I love, love, love that my dogs want to be like at my feet at all times when I'm spraying. But I really don't want to give them health complications if I can help it. You can see they found the water. Molly always leaves a water trail. So this is almost like a hangout session here at Jekyll Bates this morning. 
We're just chilling and painting. Okay, got that. Now, the first thing that I, I always try to preach going from the lightest colors you have to the darkest colors, and if you can do it in that order, then that's extremely helpful because you can almost get away with not cleaning out your chamber every time. So the next thing that we're going to put in is a little bit of pink, and all I want to do is hit the area around the gill plate. I'm not going to put in much pink at all, just like two drops, literally. That's it. Okay. Just give it that little blush. And do the same thing on the other side. And then all at the very tip of this on the back side. And then just wrap that around. Now the top's going to get covered. It's going to get darker. There we go. Now we've got our blush pink on the gill plate area okay now this time I am we're done with the pink completely now I ate rocks old school this morning with some old Van Halen folks grew up on Van Halen yes yes it's true I was a metalhead I still kind of am. I love it all. I love all kinds of music, but rock and roll's got my heart. Okay, just a quick clean. We're going to clean this real good at the end of the video. I like Maui. I mean, I really didn't used to care for Maui Blue that much, um, but it, it definitely has won my heart here. I think it's a pretty unique color and I I don't see it enough and again we don't need much I just got a little tiny bit and we're just gonna come up there we go can kind of overshoot that now one thing just so you know I'm not going real dark on these colors at all because Threadfin, for the most part, aren't colorful fish. They really aren't. Um, sometimes you see them where they're blue and white and crazy colors. Um, the match the hatch is where it's at for me because a lot of the stuff that I'm fishing, and at least the areas here now, I send baits out all over the country and Canada. Most of the stuff is looks pretty beat up after the spawn. Uh, the only time I ever really see colorful shad are uh, during the spawn and uh, in fall when they're gorging and then they get real white and then they die and they look almost ghostly white when they're dying off oh. lost in the jet stream now we'll do a little bit darker we're just going to keep going degrees of shading and this isn't necessarily darker, but it's a different shade. We're just going to come right down the top there. Done with that. Just get that top layer out. Alright, that's cleaned out. Now we want to throw in a little bit. This is the burnt sienna, the detailed burnt sienna. Yeah, see, I wasn't checking and it's all crusty. Just take an extra bit of time and get all that nasty junk out. Keep it off of the, the tip of your needle. Them were good days, folks. Fast cars, fun. Harford County, Maryland, in the Shire. That's where I grew up. 
see Milton Wright High School, y'all. Good stuff. Now we're just on this and put this back in the light. I, this is what I call a bruising effect. Super light. I really don't want much, much shading at all on this. I'm just kind of giving it the, a modeled look. All right, that's it. I'm gonna blow that off. Clean that up real quick. We're gonna come back with a black. And then on top of the black, we're gonna add just a little bit of Com Art Pearlescence. And I'm shooting straight Pearlescence right out of the bottle. And that's got junk on it too. See, I'm trying to fly through this for you guys. I shouldn't be. Need to practice what I preach, huh? Okay. Got that taken care of. And just a few drops. Add a little bit across the back. Continue that down this, the sides. And just do a little bit of shot on the bottom. We're angling this out. Now remember what I said a few videos, spray sessions ago that you can get kind of that crazy cool 3D effect. So you want to see if it works on something that's not real raised like netting? I bet it does. Now, that should produce a little bit of a 3D effect on there. Let's go ahead and heat set this and we'll come right back. All right, we're gonna give the uh, big reveal here and pull this netting off, see how it turned out. Remember, we, uh, we hook the back eyelet first, so we're going to pull from the front back, from the nose and the bill area, and we're just going to peel that back. There we go. I'd say we uh, we turned out okay. So now we have the shading. We've got the dark properties on the top. That's going to create that profile. We've got uh, a little bit of bruising effect here. And you see how blending, not heat setting until everything has been sprayed after the white, kind of gives you a little bit better of a blend. You know, you're, the lines between the colors are not defined. They look like they flow better. And that's the kind of that's the kind of look we're going for. There we go. Good scaling all the way down. Happy with the way the scaling turned out. So that's a uh, buck eighteen a yard. Walmart. Go get you some alligator clips. We've done everything except for we're going to do some shading around the eyes, and we need to do that shad dot. Then we're going to add some random splatter. There's two ways you can do random splatter. You can do it with taking the tip off but you know that's just messy and a lot of guys like to do it that way just kind of work with what they have left in the chamber but I can use what's left in the chamber and not have to take it out of the chamber just by using a paintbrush and I think that's the route that I'm going to go today so let's uh, start with taking this the edge of that q-tip just dipping it all right we've got a ample amount to do both of these now you want to be as accurate as possible well, just this is dry so I've got this laid down so let's see if we can 
work this out to where it's going to make sense. So from the eye, I want you guys to count back one, two, three. Okay, and then go up in between it. So from our eye, we're going to count back one, two, three, and then just go right here. And there's your shad dot on that side. And we're just above the center of the eye on this. And we're going to flip it over to the other side. We're going to count back one, two, three. We're going to lay it in right here. And when you turn that over, you're pretty even on your shad dots. That's just a, when you're using netting, that's a real quick tip to even those shad dots out on both sides. Okay, we're going to do some shading on the eyes. I should still have just enough left in this chamber to knock that out. Ah, dang. Okay, now you know what I mean about condensation. So we just screwed that up because water shot out. And it will happen occasionally, but while the bait's still wet, you can even just take your fingertip, kind of blot that. That is a shame, but it does happen occasionally. And then get that excess crap off of there. Do it again. Pull back gently on your trigger. Now I've pulled my... Generally when I... Okay, so let me, let me make a distinction here. Generally when I'm spraying base coats and accent colors, I work with PSI between 35 and 45. When I pull that back, I'm at about 10 PSI right now just to do the eye shading. And I'm real light on that trigger, super light. So now we have some eye shading. And if you want, while you have a little bit of black in the chamber, you can give it some bruising. It does look kind of cool. Okay. And the last step, actually next to the last step, so we're going to go ahead and make some random splatter on this. Just a little bit, not too much. And I think I will go ahead, since I'm just about out of paint, I don't think that I have enough to really do what I need to do, turn that pressure back up, blow that chamber out, get it initially clean. We're going to clean everything really, really good. I do after every single project or when I'm done for the day. I try and keep it as clean as I can while I'm spraying. And then after I'm done spraying, same thing. Okay, relatively clean. Let's just keep a little cleaner in there just so that doesn't get dry and hard in case there's any paint residual in it. Got our shad dots, we've got our shading on the eyes, we've got, I think, a pretty decent pattern working. The scaling looks pretty good. And you're like, wait a minute, wasn't the primer black? Yep, it was. Black absorbs, but you get this real cool 3D effect when you add white on top of a black primer that's this is the this is the uh, effect that you get. It's just, I think it's neat. We're gonna add a little bit of black paint into. Well, let's just do some basic black here into this little paint cup. Now I got a question on the last video that was uploaded from Ian. Ian, thanks for the questions. I, I get lots of good questions from you guys, and I appreciate that. So I I want to take back what I said in my answer on the comment. There's two cups that are out there um, and I I always look for this one B-23 um, and both of these have come from Amazon but the last time I ordered I must have ordered something different both are recyclable by the way you asked me if it had a raised or if it was flat on the bottom well the one that I used to use was flat completely flat on the bottom this one has got a little raised area in the middle which kind of pushes the paint off to the sides so I'm just going to use, and I think that these are a little bit less expensive. These are medicine cups. If you can't find mixing cups, it should be under mixing cups, and there is a link in the description below, but you can also search for medicine cups. These particularly, they've got the CCs, and that's if you're, you know, cough syrup or whatever. Hospitals use these, I think. Shake that a little bit. 
how do you keep the rest of the baits from getting splattered? Super easy. Whatever towel you're using to help clean your chamber, and you can see that this is this was new about a week ago. It's not new anymore. But I usually just add a backdrop, try and keep the area that I'm working around protected as best I can. Of course, I covered up my paintbrush. Of course. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. All right, we're not going to do too much splatter on this. I am going to walk over to my scrap paper. Let's grab a sheet. I've got a kind of a mixture of opaque and um, transparent. It's a little bit thinner. And I always want to make sure I don't have too much paint loaded on the end of my brush if I'm flicking it that way. And this, for this one, we are just going to flick it a little bit and then just move it up and down along the side. Of your just a tiny bit of pearlescence which is going to do two things. It's going to add a little bit more reflective property to the bait. It's going to give it a little bit of flash and pop under the water when it's moving through the water. But it's also going to mute the colors a little bit too. So I'm just going to load a tiny bit. This is Com Art Opaque Pearlescence. It's good all by itself. And a little goes a long way. So you don't need a whole lot in your chamber when you're putting it in. And yeah, I know I just just did the uh, splatter, but this isn't going to hurt it. It's not going to smear it. This is a little tackier, so when you shoot it through, you immediately want to finish by putting some cleaner in your chamber so it doesn't get sticky and tacky inside that chamber. There we go, and you can even see it's starting to shine and, and just pop a little bit more. Now on this one, this is going to take a 5 millimeter eye, probably a little bit in between. It's, it's probably like a 7 30 seconds or close to a quarter. Um, but these, now I'm choosing living eyes for this. Uh, these can be purchased, I believe, at Tackle Warehouse. You can get them at um, fishusa.com. That's the least expensive place that I've found these eyes at. There's a, a few places that carry them. A lot of the um, fly tying shops also carry living eyes. Um, you can either, now Shad will have a little bit of a, a gold property to their eye, but most of the time with Threadfin you're going to see that silver. So we're going to do an ice colored eye. And we're going to pull two off and I'm going to just a little bit, I'm going to give just a little bit of um, super glue underneath just to help those eyes stick a little bit. So I'm going to pull two off, keep them on my fingertips, pull out the Loctite. And you want to let this stuff dry really, really well before you clear coat it. So off camera, we're probably going to give it about 15 minutes of drying time between now and when we dip this bait. Now, living eyes have the, the natural shape of the pupil, and usually what you want to do with these guys is line your point up with the front of the bait. So the pupil on a fish is most of the time shaped like a teardrop, a sideways teardrop at that. A little bit more. With the point kind of aiming at the nose of the bait. So that would be just like that. And now we've got our eyes in place. You don't want to touch this too much when the glue is wet. Just give it a good chance to fuse and set in there. And there we go. This is pre-clear coat. I'm going to sign this bait while we're letting the uh, well, we're letting the Loctite dry. Get the tape off of this nose, this bill. This is a deep diver. It looks like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong if you guys know a lot about these um, 
these RC Cola baits, the novelties. But uh, that dates <laughs> RC Cola has been, I don't think they're out of commission. You just never see the, the soft drink anymore. Should be the one behind the wheel. And you can see this is a repurposed bait. It's got a little bit of old rust. Now, when this was reclaimed out of Lake Pickwick, I did scrub it down really, really good. I gave it a float test. I made sure that the integrity of the bait was good. It's going to swim like it's supposed to. So all of that has been done. But some of the rust you just can't get off. But you'll be amazed at what the bill is going to do and, and the transformation once this has got some fresh clear coat on it. Um, the other thing that we want to do just to get it as good as we can get it and most of this is probably from the old pattern that was on here, that RC Cola. You want to just go ahead and take off any junk that you can. This is probably like a July 4th special because it was a red, white, and blue bait. And it was just so messed up. There was no way I was going to be able to get the original pattern. So that's why I chose this one to do a thread fin because there weren't a whole lot of chips, dings, um, it's just old worn out bait. But we're giving it new life today. Those eyes are setting in pretty good. Doesn't take long for them to fuse. That Loctite, I tell you, this stuff is fantastic. Really, really good. Um, but again, you don't want to change chemical properties of your, your, your clear coat either. Okay, got those, set these off to the side. Let's go ahead and sign the bait. Everybody asks what I use to sign the bait. I use a Uniball Vision Elite. Looks just like that. Uniball Vision Elite. Waterproof, smudge proof, clear coat doesn't mess with it. And the year is 2018. So now we've signed the bait. Now all we gotta do is clear coat it. We're gonna wait for just a little bit longer while that dries, and let's clear coat. Now we're ready to clear coat. So I've pulled out my aluminum wire. This is 18 gauge, 10 pound. This is pretty thin. Breaks off pretty easy. It's always good to keep a pair of needle nose with the wire cutters in them. I use this, uh, a lot of other folks use something different. Um, but this is, man, best bang for your buck as far as I'm concerned. This, the 10 pound 18 gauge costs about $3 at your local hardware store, Home Depot, or Walmart. The 25 pound, which is a little bit heavier, um, is a little like a dollar more. But you get 50 and 110 feet, so that's just going to last a very long time. Um, we're going to take this and bend. This is going to be our tail drip wire. It's going to hang out of the back of the bait. And then for this one, we're going to make that kind of S hook shape. Now this is a long bill. So just leaving it like this, it's probably going to end up touching the bill. So we're going to crimp it. And it's not going anywhere. And then we're going to take the crimp piece, just fashion that up like that so it's going to hang. I'm going to do this. It's going to hang like that. Now we're ready to clear coat. Pull this off. Always keep a good seal. If you want to hang on to KBS, if that's what you're using and you want it to last as long as it possibly can, that's what you need to do. And I'm going to show you when we're putting it back on. And we're just going to dip this down all the way. Slowly dip it back out. And then while this is hanging over it, Pull that drip wire on, and you can see that it's 
flowing pretty well down that drip wire and what that does is it keeps it from loading and clumping at the bottom of the bait. And you can see now how we've created this L shape so it's not going to touch the bill, it's not going to stick to the bill and dry all weird. I'm just going to leave that hang. Ta-da! It's magic. There's the saran wrap. And it's, you know, I said saran wrap, but it doesn't have to be saran wrap, really. It does not need to be a brand name. It just needs to do the job. Um, this, I think, is from Dollar General. Probably. About that much. About a foot. Let's pull that off, and then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over itself, kind of get it as good as we can, lay that out once and back over and then fold it in threes. And make sure the flat side is the side that touches the bottom of this lid. So you're going to lay it in like this. And I usually I usually put my hand on one side and I stretch it, just like you're stretching it if this were a, a snare drum. You really want this tight and taut and push out any air that you can and then just continue to stretch this along the lid. You want to make sure that this goes over the lip everywhere because if it doesn't it's not going to seal properly. And then while you have your hand on here, place the jar or place the jar lid on top. Let it catch and then twist it until you can't twist it any tighter. And if you have a good seal, you're not going to have any kind of looseness. And that's tight. That's not going anywhere. Okay? That's how you seal it. Okay, so if you guys think that I should give away the bait that I sprayed today for you, give me a comment in the section below in the descriptions. Leave me a comment what you thought about the bait, and I appreciate you guys watching. I want you to have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Happy casting. I'll see you on the water. Janet Jekyll Bates. Until the next one. See ya. Did I miss anything, Mom? I don't think so. Good. <laughs> Everybody? Good. Very good. <laughs> oh, anything you want? You, anything you want to say to the subscribers out there? <laughs> yes. Have a good day. Awesome. And, uh, good. Have some good fishing. There you go. That well, you heard it from Mom first, right here at Jekyll Bates. <laughs>